In this video, we're turning to some dynamic array magic because what starts out as a simple scenario of a running total by row soon turns into a calculation nightmare. But don't worry, because by the end, we use some advanced functions and come up with an unbelievable solution. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here's our scenario. We have the data on the left, and all we want to do is to list out the items in each row, and then the quarters in each column, and then calculate a running total by row. So it goes Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, that's the running total, and then it resets when we get to the next row. So this is simple enough. Let's go and build this as a solution. I'll type equals unique, and I want to get my items as a unique list. We'll commit that. Fantastic, we now have our unique list of items. We then want our list of quarters. So that'll be a unique for our quarters. We can close that. Now this will spill vertically. We want these horizontally, so we're going to use transpose. And that now gives us the results that we want. So we have our items and then our quarters across each column. Now let's use our sum ifs equals sum ifs. And we want to sum the value column where the item column is equal to our value in F4 hash. So that will be our spill range. And where our quarter is less than or equal to our value in G3 hash. We'll close that and commit that formula. Fantastic, it now calculates correctly. We have a running total across each row. Now the reason this works is because our quarters are in alphabetical order. What if we replace them with regions such as north, south, east, and west, and those regions had to be in that specific order? What happens to our numbers? Well, they're now all jumbled up. North is first, but east has the lowest number because east comes first alphabetically. So how are we going to solve this? Well, this is where we turn to our dynamic array magic. So let's go and see our solution. To work through our dynamic array solution, I have duplicated our unique calculations below our original sum ifs method. Now, because arrays are positional, we're going to create some helper calculations. These won't be used in our final calculation, but they'll help us understand how everything fits together. So let's start by calculating the position of each of our rows in our final array. So here in cell L3, I'll type equals match, open bracket, and we want to match our item where it's equal to our item in F11 hash. And then we want an exact match, so that'll be zero. And when we commit that, we get a one, two, or three, depending on whether our item is Alpha, Bravo, or Charlie. So that means it gives us a position within our grid. Now let's do the same for our columns. So in M3 equals match, and we're going to use our region, and we want to match that where it's equal to our range in G10 hash. We also want an exact match lookup, and we can then commit that. And now this gives us the position as to whether it's north, south, east, or west. So we now understand our positions within our grid. Next, we need to move on and think about the calculation that we want to perform. So we can't use a sum ifs if we're working with arrays. So instead, we're going to use a filter and then a sum wrapped around that filter. Here, I'll type equals filter, opening bracket, and we want to filter our values. Now we want to filter our values based on their position, which we've already calculated. So we want to filter where our row, that is L3 hash, where that is equal to, so we're currently in our first row, so that will be one, close bracket, and then we have another condition, so we will multiply, open in bracket, where our column position, M3 hash, is less than or equal to one. So we can now close that bracket, now, if it doesn't return any values, we'll enter zero. We can close that filter and commit that value. We now get two values returned, which we can't have because we want to spill these values out. So we just want a single value. So therefore we do need to wrap this in the sum function. And now we get a value of 144. So that is the first row and the first column in our output table. Now what we need to do is to make this formula spill for everything in that range. To get the spilling functionality, we're going to use the make array function. In this section, we're just going to understand what make array does before we then apply it to our filter function. So equals make array. 
With the make array, we can determine how many rows we want. So for our example, we have three rows and we have four columns. We then use a lambda function and we then have to create the parameters for those rows and columns. So for rows, I'm going to use R. For columns, I'm going to use C. Next, we then determine what value we want to return. So if we only want to return the row numbers, we could use R. And when we commit that, you can see we get row numbers for each of those elements. If we want the column numbers, we could use C. That now just returns the column numbers. If we want both of these together, for example, we could enter R times C, and that now gives us the rows and columns multiplied together. So now that we have these positions of rows and columns, we can use make array in our filter function, which is also based on rows and columns. So now back to our example, let's combine make array with our filter function. So we're going to start with make array. Initially, we're just going to hard code our row and column numbers. So we've got three rows and four columns. We're then going to use our lambda function and we're going to use R for the rows and C for the columns. So now we just have to insert R and C for our relative positions. So rather than row one, we're going to use R and rather than column one, we're going to use C. We can now close our lambda and close our make array. And we're now calculating all of those values. We have the running total by row and it's spilling out from that first cell. Our formula is currently a bit of a mess. It has hard coded values, it's referencing helper columns. Let's turn this into a single formula so that that one formula handles everything. I'll press F2 to edit our formula and we're going to use the let function. So let enables us to create variables or placeholders that we can then use later on inside our formula. The first variable I'm going to create is row names. And that is going to refer to the spill range that starts in F11 hash. Next, I'm going to create col names. And this is going to be the range that starts in G10 hash. Now let's create our helper columns for our position in our rows and also our columns. So row position, and this was a match function. So match, open in bracket, and we want to match our item and we can now match that where it equals row names. And we want an exact match, so that will be zero. Now we want our column positions, so col position. That's also a match. And we want to match where our region matches our col names. We also want that as an exact match. So now we've got our row names, our column names, our row position, our column position. Let's make our make array called result, comma. And now we want to replace the items inside our make array. So we want our rows of our row names that will calculate as the three. For the column numbers, we want the columns of our col names. And now we have our lambda, it still refers to R and C. And then rather than L3 hash, we can refer to our row position. And rather than M3 hash, we can refer to our col position. Okay, hopefully that should be correct. Let's create a new line. We want to return our result. So we can now close our make array and our let. We'll commit that and it still calculates the correct values. As you can see, nothing now references any of those additional helper columns. So we can delete both of those and now everything is coming from that single formula. Now you might be thinking, I don't want a running total by row, I want a running total by column. Well, we can easily change our formula to accommodate that. So rather than referencing R, so equals R, we can say it's less than or equal to R and it's equal to C. And now we get a running total by column. And that's it, that's how we can get a running total 
by row or by column, irrespective of the order of the elements in the row header or the column header. If you like this video, why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos because we've got lots of great Excel content coming up. And then once you've done that, click there. That's the next awesome Excel video that you want to watch. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.